Okay, good evening, uh, everyone. Um, I'm going to call the public hearing to order. And I do have an opening statement that this council meeting is being convened in order to hear public hearings, to hold public hearings on land use matters. The public and anyone who believes their interest in property is affected by the agenda items may speak or present written submissions to council on these matters. Those of you who wish to speak should, after being recognized by the chair, begin by clearly stating your name and your address. If you have a written submission, uh, you might make this known at the beginning. Everyone will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard at the hearing. No one should feel discouraged from making their views known. Any person who wishes to present a written submission to council may do so. The essence of the submission will be read out by the city clerk. All written submissions will be retained by the city clerk and will form part of the record of the hearing. Now, that this is all subject to the rules that we now have for remote meetings. <clears throat> Each speaker may address the hearing a maximum of twice. The length of your first presentation will be limited to 10 minutes, providing your comments are relevant and the hearing is not being obstructed. Any additional presentation, which must be on new information, will be limited to a maximum of three minutes. Members of council may ask questions of you following your presentation. However, the function of council members during a public hearing is to listen to the views of the public, not to debate the merits of matters with citizens. Any debate by members of council will occur at the subsequent vote. So the order of proceedings for each item normally will be as follows. First of all, the city clerk will briefly describe the matter under consideration. Then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make a brief presentation of up to 10 minutes. Then the city clerk will identify any written submissions received. Oral submissions from the public will then be heard and any further written submissions will be received and the hearing will be closed and matters may be considered. So please observe these rules. And if you have any concerns with the manner in which the hearing is conducted, direct your comments to the chair. Now, before we get going on the first item, you should have all received an email regarding item number two, which is the Farming First strategy. And the basic situation is that uh, there, was, there, needed, there needs to be some amendments to the bylaws, which were not included in the first, second, and third reading. So my suggestion uh, is that number two, which is the Farming First strategy, be tabled to the next public hearing, which would be on April 19th here in the council chambers. And, uh, and that would be done in order that proper notification and the proper procedures can be followed uh, for this important strategy. So if you agree with me, may I have that motion? Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All right. Uh, Councillor Steves. Yeah, um, I'm in favor of tabling it, but I would draw attention to page 214 of the report. It covers what we were talking about this afternoon. Uh, continuing improvement of uh, irrigation and drainage uh, tr structure for, to secure suitable water supplies and functional drainage systems. Uh, encourage suitable farm practices utilizing on-site water drainage storage and use and continue to manufacture, ma monitor the impact of Fraser River salt wedge on agricultural land and support improvements to supply salt-free irrigation water. And so I just draw that to your attention because it looks like the Public Works Department hasn't talked to the Planning Department. We're all discussed. And uh, to, to tell you what those three, three clauses mean, in around 2000, we actually put in a pond, uh, a, uh, a reservoir at Gary Point Park, up the street from Gary, uh, not Gary, at, at Garden City Park, up the street from the Garden City Lands. And that reservoir was to collect rainwater from buildings to stop flooding of farmlands south of the Stevenson Highway because we couldn't dump it, uh, pump it out fast enough and retain the water to release it into farmland when, when there was a, a time of the year when there was less rain. And so that's, that was one recommendation that we have in this report to continue doing that. And then the other aspect is the, the um, uh, reservoir for Fraser River Saltwater Wedge. Uh, if you recall, in 2012, and that's probably when we had a report on it when this workshop was done that I was mentioning earlier, uh, we were looking at the idea if the uh, bridge went across when Christy Clark suggested a bridge, 
that we would get the province to build a canal across from north to south so we bring the fresh water from the north to the south. So it's all in this report. I don't know what background they've got and where the original reports are, but, but that's what that all says. And it's quite contrary to the report we had this afternoon. All right, so we'll ask staff to uh, take a look at that as well. So I'll call the question on, table, on the tabling motion. All those in favor? Uh, any opposed to that? Okay, so that's carried. Now, uh, again, just before we get into number one, Councillor Liu, you said you were having difficulty hearing. Is it okay now? I, I re-signed it. I'm back. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, no. okay uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, item number one. Thank you, Your Worship. Item number one is official community plan bylaw 7100 and 9000 amendment bylaw 10154. The location of this application is 5300 number three road. The applicant is Van Prop Investments Limited uh, in Incorporated number 270547. The purpose of the application is to guide future multi-phased redevelopment of the property to the, the developer proposes a master, master land use plan that includes amendment to bylaw 9000, the, the city's official community plan OCP, and bylaw 7100, schedule 2.10 of the OCP, the city center area plan, uh, to uh, accomplish the following. Locate and dis distribute the four hectares, 10 acres of major park that the CCAP identifies for the subject site into four distinct yet related public spaces. Also to reorganize on-site density and building heights while maintaining the density permitted by the approved CCAP and make finer, to make uh, minor related amendments to the CCAP. First reading of this application and the related bylaws took place on February 8th, 2021. All right. Um... Now, you've got the list of potential speakers for tonight. Um, and I'm not sure that, well, we'll see how many of them actually want to speak at length. Uh, but we do have the applicant from Van Prop, Kim McInnes, is here. Uh, Mr. McInnes, did you or some of your group want to make a presentation or were you wanting to wait for questions? Um, we just, uh, uh, Your Worship, uh, Mayor Brody and Council Members, uh, we did want to make a very brief presentation, um, and it would be split, and we were well aware of the 10-minute time limitation, but it would be split between myself and the lead architect, uh, Joost um, He uh, and we will make sure that our presentation is well below the 10 minutes. The, um, the other person that's actually joining us in our room is Jesse Gallus, who's our head of development. So uh, his role will really be to, to provide it, any, uh, an, any answers to technical questions or, of course, we could. Yeah, I don't have any, I don't think I've got him listed, uh, that gentleman. So anyway, let's, let's see where it is. Okay, why don't you... Uh, so it's it's you and Mr. Bacher will be the, the kind of the lead delegates yes. for this. So why That's don't correct. you go ahead? Um, I'm not, uh, for some reason, I'm not allowed to uh, activate my video. So my apologies for that. Really? Um, yeah. I, I, it's Just let me, let me see if we can do some, something about that. Um, Evangel? What? Um, he has to turn on his own video. Everybody. Have you turned on your own video? Yeah, the video is on. Oh, here we go. Just one sec. Sorry. Right, oh, no. Okay. Sorry, Mayor Brody. That was my, my mistake. All right. So can you turn on your video then? Yep. Okay. Uh, it, it's on. There you go. Now we can see you. All is good. <laughs> Perfect. Um, uh, uh, I am Kim Guinness, and I'm the CEO of Vanprop Investments Limited. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for the opportunity to speak to you today. As I mentioned earlier in some of my preliminary comments, um, we will not be taking up um, uh, much time of, of the council. Um, I'm going to keep my remarks quite brief. 
and, um, and we will answer any questions from either uh, council or any particular stakeholders directed through council. Um, Van Prop, we are, we are long-term holders of this, this property. Um, and, you know, we have always maintained uh, dedicated to delivering a high quality uh, shopping and dining experience to the Richmond community. When the, when the project is fully built out, Van Prop will have a significant ownership in the project going forward, which I think is a really important point. Um, you know, they have, uh, we have been very committed to the community. We've worked with uh, numerous stakeholders and, we'll, and we are embedded with the community. So that's a real commitment that Van Prop's uh, prepared to make. Uh, our vision and master plan uh, for Lansdowne Center seeks to create a vibrant mixed use community, uh, encompassing homes, offices, parks, shopping and amenities um, for the community. Um, you know, what we're trying to do is really create this development as the new hub for Richmond City. Um, and we also acknowledge that uh, in order for a vision to successfully be implemented and utilized by the community, our plan has to be developed to reflect the community's priorities, and we know that. So based on years of dialogue with the community members and, uh, and discussions with various groups within the community members and stakeholders, and, and consultations uh, and engaging local community groups, um, we have had very strong and positive and, and constructive input into what we're trying to do. Uh, with the long-term build-up, uh, the proposal will generate a steady stream of thousands of full-time jobs, opportunities uh, in the workforce, uh, both in the construction side, uh, during the construction phases, and there will be another uh, 4,200 uh, full-time jobs uh, split roughly between the uh, retail portion of the development that we're, uh, we're proposing as well as through the office. Uh, you know, we are hoping to renew this site over the next 10 to 20 years, and we're very proud of the master plan of vision uh, that we have actually helped craft uh, working with the city and the various stakeholders. Um, the master plan vision is developed, and we are looking forward to continuing to work with the city throughout the rezoning process. As the city staff reports, tonight we are just proposing an official plan amendment and a city center area plan amendment and subject to council's approval of the proposed master plan, VanProp will still be required to submit individual zoning and development applications for each phase of the development. Um, we have been, uh, VanProp has been a very strong community supporter. Uh, we have been a very strong uh, support of local community organizations and we've been in the community a long time. And our goal is to continue to be in the community and to support the community. Uh, let me turn it over to Joost Bakker. Uh, he's a partner at Dialogue, and they are the master plan architects uh, for the redevelopment. Okay, Mr. Bakker. Good evening, Mayor Brody and members of council, and I'm pleased to, to be here before you. Again, I'm Joost Bakker, a partner in Dialogue and leading the master planning and urban design for the Lansdowne Centre. I, uh, as some of you know, have a long history with the City of Richmond, including being the architect of City Hall and the urban designer for the Richmond Oval. Uh, my involvement with Lansdowne goes back some 11 years and two generations uh, of the ownership group. And uh, I was first uh, introduced to the shareholders through the former city mayor, Greg Halsey-Brandt. Uh, as a partner in Dialogue and formerly Hobson Bacher Boniface Hayden Architects, I've been involved in a number of master planned communities, both nationally and internationally. In this region, some projects that include the redevelopment of Granville Island, Universe City, the, the planned community for 10,000 at Simon Fraser University, and uh, as well, the Olympic Village in uh, Falls Creek. I believe we understand all of the components required of developing and creating a successful master plan and creating places that people enjoy. As I mentioned, we have worked collaboratively with Van Prop for 10 plus years to develop this, uh, I think, quite distinctive master plan. 
The Lansdowne Redevelopment Plan seeks to be a destination and a legacy, much like the historic Lansdowne track that was on the site, uh, and then more recently the Woodward Centre itself. So this has always been a place that's been a destination, not only for people in Richmond, but for the much larger surrounding community. From the beginning, our master planning process has been centered around defining principles of building community, economic vitality, livability, physical and social connectivity, and sustainability. We believe the Lansdowne Center plan strikes a great balance between providing housing, much needed housing, and commercial density that will benefit the community and a suite of public amenities and open spaces that will bring people together and foster development of a complete community. It will be a highly walkable and transit focused community, all in a way that leverages the best design principle and embraces unique and transformative architecture. We see it as becoming a new heart in downtown Richmond. Thank you very much. Kim, anything further to finish that off, or does that conclude no. subject to questions? That, that concluded our presentation. Okay. Subject to questions. All right, thank you both. Um, we have a question from Councillor Day. Thank you very much for your presentation, and I do agree. This is going to be the heart of Richmond. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'm referring to uh, page uh, 11 of, of the report, a PH 16 for, for Council. Um, it says that the incremental phase redevelopment of the site um, means there are ongoing opportunities for the school board to secure a school site on the subject site to accommodate post-2013 growth. Um, I'm really pleased to see the letter from the school board, and I'm really pleased to see that you've had a communication with them. My question is, how affordable will it be? Will they need to get in on the ground floor, or is the price just, you know, like, is there any special consideration for the school board? Uh, that through uh, you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councillor Day, um, you know, we, we have had a number of discussions uh, uh, with the district school board. Um, it, it is a use that um, we, we would very seriously consider on the site. But one of the challenges, as you know, we, we have is, uh, you know, we would have to strike a deal that made sense economically um, for both the developer as, as well as the district school. I mean, we've got a, we've got a number of amenity packages and, some, and, and, and a lot of uh, positive attributes that we're putting on the site. And I think that if, um, if the school board was interested and we, uh, we would be open to a dialogue at the right time, depending on what they wanted to do. Um, right. So to answer, sorry, to answer your question, I, I think the economics, we would just have to work with the district um, to, uh, to, 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 to see if we could make something that makes sense for them and as well as make something for us. All right, Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to uh, Zeph Delegate. Uh, I'm just uh, looking at the list of the speakers, and there's a few who've written in to us who are not on the speaker list. Um, and in their um, letters to us, uh, Mayor and Council, there's a few questions that uh, I'd like to just pass along because I see they're not here to ask them. Well, uh, and I think it's let's, probably let's that wait. Answer. Let's wait to see what the delegates have to say because there's a whole list of them and see if there's okay. anything remaining after that. Uh, when, and then he'll be ready, he'll be able to come back in to speak that later on? Yeah. But, yeah, okay, great, thanks. All right, uh, we'll now go to the next uh, speaker, Shana Furlong from the Richmond Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much, Mayor Brody. Can everyone hear me? Uh, yes, I'm not sure we can see you. Oh, there you are, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, good evening, Mayor Brody and Councillors. My name is Shana Furlong. I am the acting co-CEO of the Richmond Chamber of Commerce. Uh, today, I am speaking in favor of the land and redevelopment by Manprop Investments Limited. 
The Richmond Chamber has been an independent advocate for Richmond employers since 1925, which is right around this time the second question opened as a first raising for that. Uh, our organization represents nearly a thousand members of all sizes from virtually every industry and profession. Her membership includes national and international corporations, mid-sized firms, entrepreneurial startups, nonprofits, and small companies. As you know, Richmond is a net importer of jobs. According to the 2016 census, there were 1.35 jobs in Richmond for every resident member of its labor force. This was the highest ratio in the entire metro Vancouver region at the time. Indeed, we hear often from employers that the challenge of finding workers for them to meet over a bridge or through a tunnel to work on the route or the island. The strength of the residential real estate market in Richmond has unfortunately made it difficult for many young families and working adults to put down their roots in our city. We intended 4,000 to 4,500 residential units in the proposed redevelopment are estimated to house between 8,000 and 10,000 residents. That influx of housing supply is necessary for Richmond's economy to continue to flourish. Moreover, the diversity of housing, including townhomes, affordable housing, and condos, should help to support residents and their families at various stages of life. In Richmond, we don't just have a dearth of housing supply, we have a deficit of office space in the city center for it. The new office towers included in the plan are adjacent to the Canada Line. Working in one of those offices, you could easily travel to downtown Vancouver to take a meeting with a client, for transfer to IBR for a business trip. This plan includes over 750,000 square feet of new retail and office space. Uh, the street level retail space connected by the green promenades and multimodal green roads could provide eye patching central locations for Richmond based retailers and restaurants. Furthermore, these offices, retail spaces, civic plaza, green spaces, and housing are located directly on the center line. A friendly oriented mixed use community would bring a metropolitan atmosphere to the area. To conclude, the proposed phase three development at Lansdowne Center seems to be a modern solution for central Richmond. There is a terrific opportunity to create a cohesive and diverse community on the 50 acre site. As I mentioned, many of the elements of this plan address key needs expressed by the business community. This concludes my remarks. Thank you so much for your time and attention. All right. Thank you. We'll now go to Ella Huang from the Richmond uh, Center for Disability. Ella? Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Uh, good evening, uh, His Worship uh, Mayor. Body. I'm council member from Ella Huang, executive, executive director of the Richmond Center of Disability, and our address is uh, Unit 842 5300 uh, Number 3 Road. And uh, since 2019 January, RCD has, uh, has been a tenant of land props uh, within the Lansdowne Center. And I'm here uh, to, on behalf of our organization to express our support for the redevelopment of Lansdowne Center. As both a service provider for people living in our community with a disability, as well as a current tenant of Lansdowne Center. I feel that I'm in a good position to say that Venprop has done an excellent job to engage people with disabilities and the RCD in the development of their master land use plan in a meaningful way. In my view, this engagement has resulted in a land use plan that will create a truly inclusive environment in line with the RCD's values and vision for Richmond's future. We look forward to continuing our engagement on this project moving forward. The master land use plan presented today has several features that I believe will be most beneficial for those in our network and community. Firstly, the plan has been designed so that majority of the residential and community uses are located within five minutes of Lansdowne Station. This hugely improves accessibility to the site and helps remove barriers for those with mobility challenges. Further to this, I understand the overall street and pedestrian network has been designed to accommodate those with accessibility challenges by incorporating large sidewalks and enhanced street crossings to ensure safety and ease of connectivity. Finally, I'd like to also commend Van Prop and the city for integrating a new city park within the plan that will include provisions for flexible programming. 
this open space will be extremely beneficial to RCD and our network for recreational use, as well as a space to host some of the educational programs as a continuation of the ongoing support from Van Prop to build an inclusive society. Overall, the RCD believes this is a great project for the city's future, one that will benefit many in our community, and not just those living with disabilities and mobility challenges. I look forward to seeing this project approved tonight to move forward on phase one of the redevelopment. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Ella. Thank you for presenting. Uh, we'll now go to Mario Gonzaga. He is not online. Then we'll go to Robert Brown. Is Robert Good evening. Uh, yep. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Robert Brown is my name. Um, I'm with Catalyst Community Development Society. Uh, my home address is uh, 4478 James Street in Vancouver. Um, I'm here tonight uh, to speak as a, as a non-profit society that develops, owns, and operates below market affordable rental housing. Sir, um, sir, did you mean to turn on your video? I attempted to, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. It says unable to start video. Okay, no. sorry. Carry on then. Oh, it says start video now. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so this evening we're speaking as a as a non-profit affordable housing op owner and operator uh, in support of this master plan and OCP amendment application, uh, primarily because it will ensure the delivery of a substantial amount of of below market rental housing, which, as you all know, are, is so critically needed in in the city of Richmond. Uh, through your very creative and, and pioneering low end of market rental policy, uh, you've seen a delivery of a substantial amount of housing and this application will deliver on that as well. Um, the, the housing would, the low end of market rental housing would, would be affordable to people in the range with gross household income between 34,000 and 60,000 a year. As a frame of reference, uh, full-time minimum wage uh, annual income is around just under thirty-two thousand. So, this housing would support people on 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 uh, very moderate incomes. Uh, we speak from experience in that we uh, own and operate uh, thirty-one rental homes that was built were built through the low end of market rental housing program. We purchased them at a reduced rate from Intracorp at uh, River Park Place uh, next to the Oval. And we have owned and operated that housing for the last year. Um, as context, it, it, those homes are between one bedroom and three bedroom. They house seniors, they house families, they house single people, couples. Uh, and through a partnership with Richmond Society for Community Living, we also uh, house people uh, uh, with developmental disabilities. Um, this housing through this program and, and as proposed in this development is a critical part of the housing continuum in your, in your community. Um, not only is it affordable, but through nonprofit ownership and operation, it, it will be stable and secure housing. And we found that is as important as the level of affordability. So with that, I'll just conclude by commending you again for your, your strong policy and encouraging you to consider this uh, application in front of you that will help deliver such very critical housing. Thank you and good evening. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now go to Ahmed Omran from Success. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ahmed Amran. I'm speaking on behalf of Success, which is one of the largest social services agencies in Canada. Um, our mission is to empower people on their Canadian journey to achieve their goals through services and advocacy that promote belonging, wellness, and independence. Sir, could you Success has a your, very. Could you turn on your video? I apologize. I'm not in a position to turn on my video, but I hope you can hear me well. I can hear you. Thank you. Um, to continue, uh, success has a very strong presence in Richmond, 
Uh, we provide a number of services in Richmond, such as immigrant and social services, language classes, long-term care for seniors, and affordable housing for seniors and families. Uh, the t affordable housing is the focus of my comments today. Uh, this project will provide much-needed affordable housing in Richmond, which cannot be built fast enough. Uh, I'm in support of well-designed projects uh, like this one, which provide affordable housing to the community. And the faster we can build such projects, the faster we can help the low-income households who are in desperate need of affordable housing. I look forward to seeing this project approved and move forward and into construction as fast as we can. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Next uh, speaker is Sylvain Siller from Modo. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just turned off my video, but uh, I, I can't see myself, so um, we are. Uh, there we go. I, I think Hi. The, the, uh, the dip for, for the various delegations, I think the difficulty is when you're in the waiting room, you can't turn on your video, but once we let you in, you can. So in any case, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I work for Moto PC's first uh, car sharing crop. Uh, Moto's address is 470 Granville Street in Vancouver. If you also need my home address, I'll be happy to provide that. No, we, no, we don't. Oh, okay. Uh, Moto was founded in uh, Vancouver in 1997. It exists to transform communities by providing people with an affordable, convenient, inclusive, and sustainable alternative to owning a vehicle or a second one. We support the needs of more than 20,000 drivers and 900 organizations. On behalf of Modo, I would like to express our support for the OCP amendment and related master plan. Modo provided the applicant with a high level assessment of the demand for round trip car sharing services, which could emerge from the community envisioned by the applicant. We believe that several aspects of the project uh, provide the applicant and the city with an opportunity to move away from a car-centric form of urban uh, urbanism, pardon me, and instead focus on public transit, active transportation supported by shared mobility services like car sharing. All transportation experts agree the future of urban transportation is shared, electric, and autonomous. Autonomous is still a little ways uh, away, but shared and electric is already here. And this development, if approved, will help, help its future residents and the nearby community better embrace the future of transportation, transitioning away from the two-car household norm, which is just not sustainable as our region continues to grow. New development projects must be built for the way people will live and move for the next 50 years, not the last. We believe that this project has a chance to do that. And for all the reasons that I mentioned, Moto encourages members of council to approve the OCP amendment. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We'll now go to uh, Rebecca Swain from TWU. And just so the speakers know what's coming, after Ms. Swain will be Judy Yang, then Stephen DeRush, and then Janice Saison, just so you know. All right, uh, Ms. Swain. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, great. Good evening, Mayor Brody and Council. I am pleased to present remarks as the Executive Director of Trinity Western University here in Richmond and am also a resident of Richmond and as one who lives, works, and plays in the city, have since moving here in 2012, seen the importance that Lansdowne plays as a key community gathering space and believe that continuing as a commercial destination in the heart of Richmond is important, but the continued use of the space for engagement in this flourishing community is equally significant. And when Trinity Western University was looking to launch a new urban center, it was evident that Richmond provided a unique combination that would be attractive to university students. Since opening our doors at our minimum location in 2015, TW Richmond has experienced tremendous growth so much so that we outgrew our original space within four years, and the old Future Shop space in Lansdowne Mall provided a short-term solution to this problem. Opening in January of 2020, the acquisition of critically needed space at Lansdowne Mall enabled us to respond to this market demand. And today, close to a 1,000 of our undergraduates and masters call 
TW Richmond their academic home. So we are committed to building our presence in Richmond and serving the needs to local and international learners for decades to come. And looking ahead to the next 50 to 100 years, we wish to bring additional high quality programs. And as we have had conversations to see how we can grow in a sustainable way in the city of Richmond, we are encouraged by our initial conversations with FAMPROP, looking at the implications of the loss of our current mall space while we imagine a future place alongside or within this new development, we are encouraged by VAMPROP's commitment to create a space that offers a mix of amenities, green space, commercial space, and space geared toward community engagement alongside some affordable housing within a design community. It's a very attractive combination to the university audience and would be ideal for Trinity Western University's larger campus in Richmond. Pre-pandemic, the VAMPROP team met with the focus group of our current students, and the feedback from these students on the Lansdowne redevelopment plan was overwhelmingly positive with keen interest in the types of housing being proposed. So there are a few other sites in the urban center of Richmond that could offer a growing university such as ours this potential blend of strategically placed classrooms, entry-level housing, and world-class community gathering space. So we appreciate the value that the City of Richmond places on education and trust that the committee will take the needs of institutions of higher education and their university age students into consideration as you assess the merit of mixed space development such as the one proposed. So in conclusion, Trinity Western University hopes the Council will move forward with the Lansdowne Master Land Use Plan, believing it will further the vision of the City of Richmond in becoming the most appealing, livable, and well-managed community in Canada. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We'll now go to Judy Yang. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Judy Yang. I'm speaking as a resident whose benefit will be significantly affected by the rezoning plan. I'd like to raise my three concerns regarding the land use. Uh, in reading the rezoning file, I noticed that on the eastern portion of the site, which is adjacent Quantalan Street, the proposed building heights are maximum 25 meters, and the building's layout is parallel to Quantalan Street. This plan will blind almost all the sunlight of my uh, building, uh, the, the, the three existing building adjacent Quantalan Street. Um, so I strongly uh, recommend the applicant the ramp rope uh, cut the residential building's height down to maximum 15 meters. And also, I suggest to lay the building's vertical to Quantalan Street uh, and leave more sunlight exposure to the existing buildings. Secondly, I strongly suggest uh, maintaining all the trees alongside Quantalan Street to keep the landscape for the benefit of community residents. Certainly, please know that at present, there are no sidewalks on Elder Bridge Way at Quantalan Street for residents walking from Quantalan Street to Number 3 Road. So I highly suggest paper sidewalk during the construction period, which enable people to walk through Canada, a uh, walk to Canada Line and Number 3 Road easily. Uh, taking these comments into consideration before development permit review process will be much appreciated. Thank you for your attention. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your submission. Uh, the next speaker will be Stephen DeRoche from Hub Cycling. Actually, thank you, uh, your, uh, Mayor Brody and, and Council. Thank you for hearing me. Uh, this evening, I'm going to speak as a resident, a private, proud resident of Richmond. I spoke at the February meeting of the uh, planning committee on behalf of HUB as I garnered input from the members uh, of Richmond, and uh, we were all supportive of the plan at that time. But tonight, I'm speaking just as a private citizen. I've been here. Well, first, I'll start with my address. I live in the St. Albans community, just a couple of minutes from City Hall in the, uh, at 8611 General Curry. I've been here for 30 years. I actually moved here because of the topography of Richmond and the fact that I love cycling. So I'm going to talk just briefly on, in support of this uh, proposal. Um, today I actually cycled two lands down to sit there and envision the future. 
uh, just to give you an idea, it's a whole six minutes away from City Hall on a bicycle. Uh, so there you go. So, so far this year, I've cycled, just for background, 800 kilometers, 95% of that in Richmond. I think I've only left Richmond once on my bicycle. I do most of my kilometers, if not all, just doing chores, like going to Linus Lane, going shopping at the Price Mart downtown, going up to Superstore, etc. So 800 kilometers in less than two and a half months, that's, uh, that's pretty good. I'm impressed, actually. Um, I wish more Richmond residents could recognize how easy it is to get around on a bicycle here. The infrastructure is pretty good. It's improving. It's looking better every day. Um, I was the first cyclist to cycle the brand new uh, River Parkway there just after the gates went down. I just happened to be in the neighborhood accidentally, gave all the construction workers a thumbs up and got a, a resounding thumbs up back from the workers. So that made me kind of happy. That's a beautiful road uh, for cycling. The master plan that uh, is proposed by Van Crop, I've studied it. I've looked at all the cycling infrastructure uh, proposals they've got in there and very happy to see everything from the uh, from the separated laneway or bike paths just like on River Parkway that they're proposing for uh, for the new Cooney extension going up there and also the two lane bike path on uh, what is that now Lansdowne Road going from the Canada Line station over to Quantlin College and beyond uh, most most supportive of that um, I see exciting and positive design considerations that are in their plan. Uh, when I look at it beside the official community plan and the city center area plan with regards to the cycling network that's going to evolve over the years, uh, I see that it fits perfectly and it will make uh, uh, cycling by residents not only at the future Lansdowne uh, uh, community but also other communities around to get to their, to their residences and to all the retail outlets around. Um, I, I looked at the pathways, the greenways, all the roadways, and how all these residents, the, the 8,000, 10,000 residents, might want to uh, get to the Canada Line. Uh, beautiful pathways for cyclists and pedestrians alike. Uh, what else we got here? The Linear Park. I know it's a uh, phased development, so it's going to be years and years, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on, on, on the proposals as they arise in the decades to come. I'm excited by the future of this neighborhood, this upcoming neighborhood. Large, it's design focused, emphasizes multimodal safety of the pedestrians and the cyclists. I think it'll go a long way helping Richmond reduce its carbon footprint by making it more amenable to uh, active transportation. Uh, I believe, uh, as a utilitarian cyclist, uh, meaning doing shopping, going doing chores like that, it, I want to see more and more people in Richmond do that. And I see nothing but positivity coming out of the uh, the master plan that uh, Van Prop is proposing. So that's it. As a private resident, I'm really proud uh, to see the design put forth, and I hope you support it. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you. We have a question from Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just to the delegate here, uh, three specific uh, pointed questions related to cycling. Uh, and I appreciate all the comments you've provided so far, so I only have a few left. Um, First one is related to like the existing area, um, or maybe you've taken your bike up the um, up the elevator uh, to to use to take it onto a Canada Line station or uh, the Lansdowne station. You've, you've done that. Uh, I I usually uh, during the summer uh, I take the elevator at the uh, the Breakhouse station twice a day. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've, ne I've never taken mine up at the Lansdowne one, but um, do you? Do you feel the, um, the the capacity is adequate, or, or would a project like this be um, would would you hope that it would have a, a larger elevator or escalator for bikes where you could take two or three up at a time up an elevator? Uh, yeah, I've 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 heard that question about the size of elevators, and you know, for me, I wait for all pedestrians to go by. I'm on a I'm on a bicycle. I'm never in a hurry to get anywhere. I will let people with walkers, elderly people, take the elevators. I'll wait my turn. I'll take the elevator. I rarely would get on an elevator with two, another bicycle just for the fact of, you know, bumping into their bike with my pedal or into their leg. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if the, uh, the van prop proposal would include, I didn't see it, uh, the redesign of a TransLink or, sorry, a Canada Line uh, elevator, the whole station. I don't, I didn't read okay, it. Thank you. Let me try the delegate, just the two other short ones. Um, have you, from, from your um, network, have you um, heard the, the need for uh, parkade as opposed to 
um, individual bike lockers? W- would there be one spot along the camera line or one station where you've heard more demand for a larger capacity of, of bike um, parkade use? I, yeah, I, I, I did. I did look at that. That uh, better parking for uh, residents of this new development, this new neighborhood. It would be nice to have a parkade and not just individual parking things. So people from outside of the the neighborhood, the Lansdowne, could cycle to an actual parkade. Uh, having these bulky individual lockers in fiberglass, I'm not a proponent of that. But I like the okay. parkade idea. Really do. Thank, thank you so much. I just have one final uh, short question through the chair to the delegate. Um, you were there today, and you made you said maybe you made some obs- observations. Um, do, do you do you feel that there is exi- already power outlets for people who who charge bikes? I'm not sure if yours is a electric bike. You're probably no. a, an old school cyclist. Um, yeah. But, uh, do, do you do you, do you hear about uh, that issue where people are looking for places to to charge near the Caroline stations? And no, I don't have any input or uh, feedback on charging electric bikes. Which kind of strangely enough, I just worked at an e-bike manufacturing place last year. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, We'll now go to the next speaker is uh, Janet Saison. Saison. Good evening, Mayor Bernie. Yes, hi. Hello. I've turned on my video. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good evening, Mayor Bernie and Council. My name is Janet Saison. And my address was recorded during my registration with the clerk. Um, thank you for the second opportunity to speak to you about the Lansdowne Mall application as a resident of Richmond, although I was born and raised in Vancouver. I am here today to once again encourage you to continue moving this project forward. In 2000. In eight, I graduated from the Daughter School of Business with a degree in real estate and purchased my first townhouse in 2011. It was a combination of my education in real estate and the timing of the then affordable market that encouraged me to make that decision to buy my first property. I put down 5% onto a $500,000 property. It was all the money I had, and I mortgaged the rest. Fast forward five to six years, it's 2017, 2018, and we all remember when real estate activity reached record levels, and there was not enough supply to keep up with the demand. I watched in nervousness as friends and family close to my age who thought they had time to enjoy their lives and explore the world before tying themselves to a mortgage, they were quickly priced out of the market. And several of them still are to this day. I consider myself blessed and lucky to be a resident of Richmond and to have been able to fulfill a goal or dream of owning property here. However, there are so many citizens, young people, who are being forced to give up or look elsewhere. From what we're seeing in today's real estate market, which is high demand, low supply, bidding wars, record-setting prices, it's like deja vu from 2018. Except this time, driving the activity are the locals and their FOMO, fear of missing out. This housing crisis desperately needs to be addressed. And there are so many factors attributing to the ebbs and flows of this real estate market. However, I believe this council has direct influence on one major factor that can make a difference, and that is supply. I think it's imperative to the city of Richmond that it densifies, especially in those pocket regions within close proximity of mass mass transit, particularly in Lansdowne, so close to the heart of the city center. 
the Lansdowne project will create nearly 750,000 square feet of new retail and office space and an impressive 4 million square feet of new residential floor area, which I believe will create a refreshing community and more importantly, hope for the young people with goals and dreams of living in Richmond and enjoying the culture and amenities the city has to offer. My hope is that the city of Richmond executes the plans before them to accommodate these very goals and dreams of its citizens and young people. Thank you for your time and attention today. All right, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Now we have a number of speakers who have indicated that they are available for questions. James Godwin, Todd Stewart, Maggie Young, Mike Homanuk from Kerwood Lydell, and Federico Puscar uh, for Bunt and Associates, an engineer. Um, I take it that those parties still are simply here for uh, questions, un unless any of them speaks up now. Yes. All right. Um, so that concludes the delegations uh, that we have received. I should have asked before about written submissions. Did I ask about written submissions? No, okay. okay. We do have a number of written submissions, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and sorry, I... I skipped past that. So, written submissions. Yeah, I'll list the written submissions. We have 10 items uh, of support uh, in written form, uh, and I'll read them out. Uh, the first one is a letter of support uh, from Bruce Guan, who's a student at Trinity Western University. We have a letter of support from Ed Gavzi. Uh, Richmond um, resident. Um, a letter of support from Marg Yu with uh, LD, uh, the Lansdowne Exercise Group. Um, another letter of support from Monica Yip with the Lansdowne Morning Exercise Group. Uh, a letter of support from Cameron Fleming with Health, HealthLink Medical Equipment. Letter of support from Steve Kim with the Lansdowne Morning Exercise Group. A letter of support from Ray Ma with, uh, he was a community member. Letter of support from George Pope, community member. Letter of support from Crystal Zhang, property manager, manager with TNT Supermarket. Letter of support from Susan Thong, uh, Lansdowne Morning Exercise Group. We have two letters of concern with regard to the project. The first one is from Judy Young, who spoke earlier, community member, uh, and also from Evan Dunphy, community member. There's also one letter of neutral background comment uh, from Sandra Nixon, who's the chair of School District 38. Okay, so with that, uh, are there any comments or are there any questions of the applicant, uh, Councillor McPhail. Sorry, my question is for staff. Sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'll wait then. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Wolf. Uh, great, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. To, uh, Van Prop, just a, a few short questions that I, I uh, will ask on behalf of some residents who are weren't able to ask them in person. Um, first one is related to the linear park. Uh, I know it's planned to come in phases, um, but uh, the concern is that it's not really a, a continuous linear park if it's separated by two major roadways. Um, would the consideration not be to have three separate parks and to attach them to the, the anchor parks that are in the corners or in the center? Uh, it would Michael that that may uh, or Councillor Wolf that may be a, a staff question, or are you asking if we we could practically if we could do it subject to the the, the staff and the, uh, 
the bylaws that are in place. Why don't that, we, why yeah, don't we why, just a minute. Why don't we ask Wayne Craig to weigh in on that one? Yeah. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Wolf, in terms of the Lansdowne Linear Park, it is an important uh, non-vehicular uh, mode of transport uh, within the city centre area plan. It is intended to link the waterfront near the Olympic Oval to the Garden City lands. Uh, the, while the space is separated by the two roads that would be intervening, uh, that linear park uh, through detailed design at the servicing agreement stage uh, subject to future redevelopment. We will ensure that those uh, crossings are designed in a way to facilitate ease of pedestrian bicycle uh, use across them. Um, thank uh, thank you for your comments on, on both ends there. I'm just not familiar of any park, linear park even at that matter, where it's actually separated by that barge of a road. I know there's some laneways that cut some. Um, yeah, anyhow, um, my next question uh, through the chair to, um, to the delegate is um, related to the, um, sorry, I've done that one already, um, the, the scale of the north-south um, extension of, of the Hazel Bridge and Cooney and then the, the west east-west um, road. So the scale of those um, roadways um, mimic a uh, high use of traffic, kind of the, the status quo. Um, there, there's been some comments today about uh, uh, cycle-friendly topography in Richmond and, and the access to Candleland for pedestrians. Would it not be um, um, suitable to, to increase e even further? I know with, this is just the initial master plan. We don't have all the phases, which will have more detail. Um, but still, there's, there's not many who are concerned that this is building the same old style of large roads to bring in the cars. So everyone has one or more cars per person, that kind of thing. So um, can you speak to that? Wayne Craig, let's have you weigh in. Uh, to your worship, uh, I'll actually refer that question to Fred Lynn the, and Lloyd B., the, our Director of Transportation. Um, to discuss the road design, what we have done to encourage uh, alternative modes of transit, uh, et cetera. To your worship, it's Fred Lynn from Transportation here. Go ahead. Thank you, your worship. Uh, with respect to comments about uh, design of the roadways, uh, the city does take um, a balanced approach in, in our road design. Uh, specifically, um, multi modes of transportation are accommodated. So, with the um, with the length of mode developments, uh, there were some comments about the width of the roadways. But really, the width is triggered by the need to accommodate these kind of uh, mode uh, development um, roads will be designed to accommodate for cyclists, for pedestrians. And also for you know those uh, walkways to and from the Canada Line station, and as echoed by the uh, uh, one of the uh, delegates uh, from HUB, um, it is our view that the roads uh, uh, to this uh, development would be are are adequate in terms of accommodating different modes of transportation, not just for driving. Thank you. Then uh, my final question, um, I believe this one goes to Van Pop. Um, is related to the delegate who spoke tonight, uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, related to trees along Quantlin Street and the height of the, the building. Um, I know there was no response, so Wayne if, Craig. if you could have a comment. Wayne Craig. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to Councillor Wolf, in terms of building height uh, in the area referenced by the delegation, the current uh, city center area plan identifies 25 meter building height in that location. The proposed land use plan before you maintains that 25 meter building height, so there is no change in terms of the permitted building height in that area of the site. Uh, with respect to the building design and the orientation of those building design or buildings, uh, they will be reviewed in detail as part of any future rezoning and development permit. Uh, I believe the next question related to trees on Quantlin Street. Uh, similarly, the, the detailed review of forthcoming rezoning and development permits will deal with those trees in detail. Uh, I believe the last question that the delegate asked was in relationship to sidewalks on Alder Bridge, and I can assure you that as part of uh, future redevelopment, there will be sidewalks installed on the south side of Alder Bridgeway. Uh, further to that, uh, 
as we recognize that uh, this will be a phased development and construction will uh, potentially interrupt some of the uh, desired paths, uh, as with most major uh, redevelopments in the city, we do require a construction parking and management plan as part of any building permit. We would also uh, work with the applicant to ensure that there are interim connections throughout the site, uh, especially the desire line to the Canada Line Station. All right. Thank you. That's all my questions at the time. Thanks. All right. Let's have a, a motion on second and third. Okay. Someone want to move it? Moved. I move second that. and third. So it's moved and seconded. Okay, I've got speakers uh, starting, oh, a whole bunch. Uh, Councilor McNulty. You're muted, Bill. Just a couple comments on it because I know tonight we're only um, approving the amendments. And I guess um, my question, first of all, to Mr. Craig, if... Uh, if future councils, because this is what we're going to talk about, wish to make changes, is this master plan as it stands etched in stone? Uh, through your worship to Council McNulty, uh, no, I would not say that the master plan is etched in stone. Uh, what I would say is that it would be uh, embedded in the city centre area plan, so it will set the vision for the site. Uh, having done that, uh, each uh, future development will require individual rezoning and development permits. Council will maintain their uh, discretion with respect to those applications. So if a future council, because it will be probably a future council, um, if we're doing between 5 and 20 years, uh, wishes to change the OCP or the city centre area plan, do they get grandfathered or will they have to... Uh, deal with the mores of the day? Uh, through your worship to Councillor McNulty, uh, it, it would be up to the Council of the Day as to whether or not they mm -hmm. considered the OCP as set in stone, mm -hmm. uh, to use your words. Okay, I think that's, that's critical. Uh, I have another question. You know, everybody is focusing uh, on the housing, et cetera, et cetera, which I support the affordable housing and any housing and any rent that we can get. But we're going to have 8,000 people in that section. And probably going to have another 10,000 a block and a half away. I guess my question is, um, in this particular one, and it was interesting, the chamber is actually quite disappointed with the uh, presentation. I, I'm concerned that, um, in a, and I meant to ask the developer, uh, we're talking about livability and the quality of life. You can habitate there and live there, but what businesses are going to be in there and uh, how is one going to live? Because we've got lands down now as a destination point and a shopping mall. What is the vi There's no vision within this plan, and maybe it's coming down the road, for food, for medication, uh, for doctor's offices, for livability of what people will do and need in the downtown core because they're not going to be able to jump in their car and drive down three road because we can't do it now. So... Uh, where does that fit in this particular plan? And then we're going to have offices as well. So just kind of curious to, to see where it is to highlight it. Because uh, I think it should be highlighted at this time. Through your worship to Council McNulty, uh, the Master Land Use Plan does make allowances for approximately 700,000 square feet of non-residential space uh, in the form of commercial development. That commercial development would take many different forms. There will be ground-oriented retail fronting uh, the majority of city streets, especially along the western one-third of the site. Uh, there will also be strategically placed uh, office towers in certain uh, locations along number three road in close proximity to uh, the Canada Line station. In terms of the actual uses within those commercial spaces and office towers, those would be detailed as part of future rezoning and development permit applications. Um, okay. um, I, I would thought that there would be some uh, a vision for it now, uh, because if we're going to build out, and given everything else is building out around it, this is just one part of the whole um, um, layout of downtown core from, uh, to be quite frank with you, redevelopment on Granville Street uh, all the way through 
to Alderbridge and beyond, actually, uh, uh, to Canby. And I think uh, we should be um, uh, looking at it. And um, I, I will be supporting this, but uh, I think these are the kinds of questions. And again, I'm going to come back to um, uh, transportation in and out, because um, you can't get there now. I think we've got to do a reality check. You can't go number, on number three road at certain times. So my question is, are the roads going to be as wide as, uh, say, number three now with the various lips uh, for on each of the portions for walking, for cycling? Um, uh, because what we did with number three road, uh, well, is that part and parcel of it? Because we sure don't want parking on the roads. And... Uh, people on it because it'll be over like on Ferndale in Alberta. Let's get You're an lucky answer. you had a bicycle through it. Let's get an answer to this. Okay. I'd like an answer. The roadway. Through your worship to, through your worship to Councillor McNulty, uh, the roads that will be implemented as part of the landform mode development will take will function differently. For example, Cooney Road, right now there's uh, it's planned to be a five-lane arterial roadway. Um, Hazel Bridge will be four lanes, so you, there will be different functions. Um, park, whether parking will be permitted, you will be depending on whether there is any need uh, or demand for that parking. Well, I think we, my comment here, and that's why I asked the question, I think we have to be very careful in what we do in terms of development. Uh, it's, it, it appears on paper a good development, but with reality check, I think we've got to look at what is actually going to happen. And how can the rest of Richmond enjoy this development if there is retail or whatever there is or amenities in that precinct so that people can come and get there? And um, I think it's important that uh, uh, we, do, we do that. So uh, um, I, I think these are questions when asked, and I'll be interested to in note when the timing of the first, um, yeah. first phase is because... Uh, I think that's going to set the tone for everything else. So, anyhow, I will be supporting um, moving ahead, but I think uh, the developer needs to look at a reality check uh, in, in the actual livability right. and quality of life of people. Councillor Al. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, I have two questions uh, for staff. Uh, first of all, I want a clarification. So, for the issues being mentioned by Judy Yang uh, about the blocking of the sunlight, um, the sidewalks, trees, are those issues to be dealt with uh, at the actual rezoning stage? So we don't have uh, through your worship. Issues, right. Through your worship to Councilor Rao, yes, uh, those are typical issues that would be dealt with based on detailed design of buildings where we receive uh, shadow analysis, uh, landscape plans, arborist reports to review on-site trees and their condition. Uh, what I would also add is with respect to separation between the subject development and the buildings uh, inhabited by Ms. Yang, uh, there is the Kwanlun Street right-of-way, which does separate the, the, the two uh, sites. Okay. And my second question is, is about uh, the uh, Linian, Linian Park. Right. I just want to start to elaborate further on the concept of a Linian Park, because how is it different from a green walkway. Is it a park or is it just a green walkway? Because I, I think the concept of a park is that people can just go there and enjoy and, and then be leisurely, you know. But on page 17, staff actually mentioned that this is a pedestrian and cycling connection. So is it a, a beautified walkway or is it actually a park? Uh. Through your worship to Councillor Rao, I would say that it is both of the items that you referenced. It does serve as an important uh, east-west uh, linear corridor. Uh, the width of the park, though, will allow for additional uses. Uh, in terms of the design of those park spaces, they would be subject to future council approvals. Uh, in terms of uh, a, a general discussion, description of what may be possible within those areas, I would refer that question to uh, our park staff on the call. Uh, uh, I believe we have uh, Todd Gross and Jason Shan. Okay. Uh, yeah, I really to your worship, to, uh, Go ahead. To 
Richard Tukankalao, this is Jason Chan, uh, Manager in Parks Planning, Design and Construction. Uh, to answer that question, yes, um, similar to uh, Mr. Greg's response, the, um, the linear part will serve like an active transportation um, corridor through the east-west direction. Uh, it, when you think about what's included in there, uh, you need to look more further to the greenway, uh, the railway greenway, which is a multinodal, uh, you know, various mode of transportation and, and activity can happen along there. Uh, but at the same time, this is a different location than that. So not only would it support transportation for pedestrian and bike, but it would also support people accessing uh, the uh, various other uh, amenities, such as the future Central Park, the Civic Plaza, as well as other commercial spaces, residential spaces in the future development area, as well as the Canada Line Station. So similar to Mr. Griggs' answer, it's a multifunctional corridor that serves many purposes. Okay, thank right. you. I raised that question because I don't want this to be seen as a replacement <laughs> of the actual green space and the actual park space that we need to have. So don't, don't confuse it, you know, a green connection with, you know, actual park space. So I hope that this won't just uh, another, another way just to, to replace the real park space that we require. Mr. Craig, can you confirm that? Uh, through your worship, be yes. Uh, at its narrowest, this park space is 20 meters wide. Uh, the transportation infrastructure will only take up a portion of that area. All right. Okay, we'll go. Okay, we'll go to Councillor Steves. Thank you. Uh, I will be supporting this uh, proposal. I'm glad to see that Use Parker is back, and uh, that. BC, in my opinion, guarantees a quality development. Pleased to see it there used. I do have some concerns, however. I am concerned we should not be building density for density's sake. We are, have a shortage of affordable housing. We have a shortage of rental housing. We have a shortage of low, of low income housing. But in terms of the market housing, we've, we've got to find, and I haven't raised this before, but it just struck me tonight. We've got empty housing units all over the lower mainland. People buy the units, and in spite of the empty homes tax, they're still sitting empty. And I think as these units come back in, we must find some way of making sure people live in them, because the only way to solve the, the housing crisis is that people are living in the units that are, that are already there. We probably wouldn't have a housing crisis if every empty house was full of people. So it's something we need to think about in the future. I don't know how we resolve it. But I just want to say we don't have a supply problem. We have an empty house problem, and we've got to make sure that doesn't happen here. All right. Thank you. Councillor McPhail. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I will be supporting the proposal on the floor. I'm, it's a very exciting time for Richmond, and I think the next 15 to 20 years are just going to be amazing. And I think there will be challenges along the way. Uh, it was good to finally get a letter from the Richmond School District so that we can um, better understand uh, their long-range facilities plan and, you know, get a handle on their long-term uh, future needs and their funding challenges. So thanks to our staff and Van Prop, who have worked with them, I know, for many years and will continue to do so. I concur with uh, one of the previous comments about the linear park. I think it's a bit confusing. And, and perhaps it's new language. I, I know there, you know, the linear parks are more common in urban and superb, suburban areas. And I don't, I've had people say to me, well, it's not a park. I can't bring my kids to go there. So I don't think it's a park as we know it. So perhaps we need to do some, some work with that as it, you know, as it begins to roll out. So the community understands that it's more than a park. There's actually many uses to it. And so I think that's exciting. With regards to, I do have a question, Your Worship, uh, through you to staff. There was a couple of uh, letters from the Lansdowne Exercise Club, and they're talking about the need for large multi-purpose space, and, and one of them talks about the city will have an opportunity to build a community center uh, next to the candle line. So I, I guess that's the community amenity contribution that's been identified in the official community plan, but I don't think we've decided yet what it's going to be, if it's going to be a community center or what. Can you explain that process for the public? 
Uh, yes, uh, through the chair or through your worship to Council McPhail, you are correct. Uh, the city has the potential uh, through future rezoning applications to secure approximately 53,000 square feet of city-owned amenity space in the development. A decision has not been made by Council as to whether a facility will be constructed and if so, what type of facility use would be within that building. Uh, that will be the subject of a future uh, report uh, and council decision. Uh, I would add that we have uh, responded to those emails and clarified to those individuals that a community centre is not part of this proposal and any decision regarding a future city-owned amenity space will be subject to a future council decision. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Because we also have had a lot of other ideas put forward, so it's good that um, you know, you've communicated to them already. Great. Thank you very much. That's all for me. Thank you. Councillor Wolf. Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor, Your Worship. Uh, I just have a few brief uh, comments to make. Uh, I don't think I have any more questions uh, for staff, but thanks for being available. Uh, I think, uh, actually, maybe I can just get one clarification uh, from staff. Um, so I, I think there's a number of referrals that are outstanding, and if I could just make sure I got the right ones on the list here. Um, so private, uh, or trees on private property. Uh, I know we did the public one, but the private one, um, that was one. Uh, the SEEP, the Community Emissions Energy Plan. Uh, the percentage of low market rental and affordable housing and the rates. Um, are all of those still to come? Through your worship to Councillor Wolf, uh, yes, I believe that is correct. Uh, those referrals are outstanding. Uh, in addition to the affordable housing referral, there is also a referral on market rental, um, which will come forward to Council. Uh, this application would be subject to Council policy of the day at time of rezoning. So any changes to affordable housing, market rental, et cetera, will be subject to future uh, rezonings on this site. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank, thank you for uh, clarifying uh, what I thought was still coming. Um, so just a, a very brief comment then. Uh, so I think from our, our presentations from the delegates today, even on the, uh, and the ones that were written as well, the ones that were, were deemed to be four, I think they brought up a number of points that we could actually um, get more out of a, a project like this for more Richmond residents. Um, we heard about the job uh, rate being the highest in the region. We heard about the the benefits to more market rentals and, and we need them now and affordable housing and how we need them now. Um, the, the move to have more car sharing, uh, the, the need to increase housing supply um, so, and more student rentals. So we heard from the people who were in support of this project a whole bunch of points, but I, I, I'm feeling that if we were to um, table this and wait for some of those uh, outstanding referrals to come back, we could actually have a project that addresses a lot more of these uh, concerns that were brought up. Albeit overall those comments were poor, uh, but I still see that they, there was a lot of value in there that's not being addressed um, by the project. Now I'm very, I think we are all very fortunate to have uh, Van Prop be this long-term uh, landowner and has worked so well with groups like Richmond Center for Disability. Um, um, but I, I think with the, the fact that the OCP of First City, Official Community Plan, is dated back to 2012, we heard some comments today about the city center area plan uh, and how perhaps there, there's need to have that uh, amended before a major scale project like this. Um, I, I think there, it's just, um, we also have a property, uh, development not too far north of this where there is a community center being phased into the project. So again, I, I feel if it's going to be something in the future, it's, it's the most important to put it in at the time of the master plan and all those subs subsequent um, phases that will come later. Uh, it, it's just, if it's not in the official uh, plan, where I think that myself and a number of other community uh, members are, are feeling that, well, if it's on the first phase, maybe it'll be in the second, maybe it'll be in the seventh, and then, you know what, there's no more phases to approve. So I think um, we need to address a number of things uh, first. So I'm going um, uh, to not be supporting it, although I support many aspects of it. I think it should be um, uh, tabled and referred back, and that's why I didn't support it at the last uh, reading uh, for this item, because I think there's many um, members of the public who, although they could go to the Van Club website and have 
community consultation that way. Uh, they weren't feel uh, they didn't feel it was it was addressed by um, council's decisions. So um, I think more needs to be heard, and more of those referrals need to come back and be addressed by council first. So those are my comments. Thank you very much, Councillor Day. Thank you very much. Um, so as I read uh, the report, it says that on PH8 that this new development would be subject to individual rezoning and development permit plan applications. So we're not done tonight. We are just opening the door to a multi-phase redevelopment master plan. It, it's not etched in stone. So I am going to support this because I feel that a lot of work has been done and it's going in the right direction. And when we get to the first application, as the other counselors mentioned, we're going to know real quick how it's going to roll out. Um, and the other reason I'm going to support this is because this is so much better than the redevelopment of Richmond Center Mall, where a council of the past approved the plan and we couldn't change it. We were stuck with it. And I voted against the Richmond Center plan because it was just, a, in my mind, a very, very poor design. And nothing was better than what we're going to be building there. This is the opposite. This is a master plan that includes everything from space for schools to parks to affordable housing. There's just nothing that, that isn't uh, in this plan. And, you know, I, I lived in the corner of Lansdowne and Garden City as a, as a kid where the Shell Station is now. And I was there when they did the master plan for that. In fact, I... I uh, my father worked on that project, and uh, that, at the time, was the most modern, most innovative uh, mall ever. And, and now, after, you know, 50 years, it's finally become redundant and needs to be redeveloped. And I'm confident that this master plan takes us in the right direction. And then, as the, the first phase comes forward, we can talk about just how many affordable housing units and uh, how much green space and make sure we save the trees. So I think we're, uh, we're on the right track, and I'm excited about the 20-meter wide linear park. I don't think it's a park per se, but it's certainly like a rail railway um, greenway, and, and that's, that's going to open things up between um, Garden City Lands and the Oval. Um, and I'm really excited about the 5,300 square feet of amenity space. I don't know how we're going to use it, but we'll figure out something. The only concern I had was the school. And I understand there have been four locations that have been um, made available to the school board. So now it's up to them to decide whether they want a school. And I, I'm looking at the letter here from Sandra uh, Nixon, who is the uh, chair of the school board. And she said that the site would not be available for 12 to 15 years, which would align with the timing for a new elementary school in the area. So the communication between the school board, staff, and, um, and the developer is, is ongoing, and, and I hope that, and I encourage them to really work through that process, and, and let's get something in the, in the bag sooner rather than later, because if you wait too long, the prices are only going to go up. So I'm really impressed with the development team. I'm very in, impressed with the architect, and I think this is going to be the center of Richmond, and it's something that we can be proud of, and I look forward to seeing what future council decide uh, to do with this project. Thank you. How's Lou? Yeah, thank you. I, too, will be supporting this project. I, I think it's got a lot of interesting things, and I know it's, uh, it's got a lot of things that are going to happen and, and come to fruition as different policies come forward and, and council makes different changes on things like affordable housing, uh, low rentals, and those kind of things. Um, I do like the concept of the 20 meter wide linear park. I think it provides public green space for people that's accessible at grade. I think a lot of our central Richmond, we're providing green space and it's, it's up on that second level. It's not where people, your average person walking up and down the street actually has access to, is able to sit down, get be under a tree and spend some time. No, it's not a destination park, a linear park, it's not a destination park, but it's public accessible green space that is owned by the city. It's not something that someone could have put a fence around or put a hedge up and, and separate you from. So I think that's a positive thing that we're going to have. I think what's important here too is that we have a variety of housing, affordable housing, rental housing, and owned housing, condos for people. We need to have diversity in our neighborhoods of different people living together, creating a community together, all different kids going to school together, 
and, and from different backgrounds and different socioeconomic spaces and people who are just in different points in their life being able to live together and be together. And so what we do need to do is maybe we need to add some density to neighborhoods outside the city center to have some more rental available to families so they, they can go to some of the other schools so that we're not just cramming only renters into one school. I think we need a variety of people. Just like we've tried to do with our affordable housing, make sure that we sometimes scatter it throughout a building so that people are, you know, able to be together. This is what we want. We want we want a community that's being built of a variety of people. Um, I also want this applicant to be able to move forward. While there's always questions, there's always different policies that we could come forward with, we can sit here doing paralysis and have paralysis by analysis forever. The applicant needs to be able to move forward, and they need to be able to get some, some actual shovels on the ground at some point. And that's not going to happen until they actually even get their first application in, which they can't do until this happens. So everything takes time. We're still years away from seeing a building, a new building happening here. And so I think we've got to let them move forward on this. Um, and I think, uh, I think staffs work really hard to create those green spaces and then also to create, make sure that we've got uh, road access to move goods and people to the development area and then a good plan to have people to move within the development area with all the biking infrastructure, the, the multi-use paths and those kind of things. And I think with the opening of the new River Parkway, we're seeing a lot of traffic getting diverted off three road there's access now to some of those different uh, companies that are on three road and people are actually able to just zip up there go up the backside and not get into the tangle on three road so you're, you're seeing the, that plan coming to fruition the ring road concept that is happening so there's a lot of plans that have been in the works for a long time and, and they're all coming to fruition and I think this is a big master plan staffs work really hard and the applicants work really hard on this and I'm excited to watch it move forward and to see, see how it it develops. Thank you. Okay, that finishes the speaker's list then. We'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, those opposed? Aye. It is carried with Councillor Wolf opposed. <clears throat> Brings us to number three, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Number three is Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500, Amendment Bylaw 10234, RZ 20-90. 5149. The location of this application is 9931 slash 9951 Parsons Road. The applicant is Rick Bowl. The purpose of the rezoning uh, is to rezone the subject property from the single detached RS1E zone to the single detached RS2D zone to permit development of two single family lots with vehicle access from Parsons Road. First reading of this application was on February 8th, 2021. All right, I see that from the list that Rick Bowl, uh, the applicant is here and it says you're available for questions. Is that accurate? Did you just wish to be available at that, in that event? Yes, yeah, I'm here. All right, uh, written submissions. There are none, Your Worship. All right, uh, and there are no other applications. Uh, Move second and third. Okay. That's moved and seconded. We have a question from Councillor Wolf. Thank you, Your Worship, to the applicant. Uh, a question directly to you. Um, I don't know that if you have the report in front of you, but for, for those of us who do, uh, page 273 might be a, a page, kind of shows a map of what the plan is for the two uh, buildings. So my question uh, to you is, uh, looking at um, the overhead view of the of the of the parcel, um, the back portion of the property, which to me on this map here or this uh, blueprint, looks like it's kind of a rectangle that was used for gardening or something, just behind where the buildings are, are supposed to go. So my question is, are, are there plans to to continually uh, use that as a shared outdoor amenity space? And, and if not, um, is the soil deemed um, useful for a pro the project on site somewhere? Um, or can it be repurposed to be the topsoil? It just looks like there was a, a, a good amount of, of agricultural activity happening uh, behind the existing house. Let's ask Wayne um, Craig. Let's ask Wayne Craig to uh, react to that first. Or Suzanne? Suzanne Smith? Uh, through, through your worship to uh, Councillor Wolf. 
Um, I believe the, the structures or the outlines you're noting there are um, part of the tree protection uh, zones identified for, for tree protection, uh, not planting beds. I could be mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, to, uh, Chair, to, to staff, no. I, uh, I know I just referred to that page because it kind of showed oh. where the houses go up to, and I'm not that the square or the rectangle I was referring to is not shown on there. But if you look at a topographical map of the site, there's a large uh, rectangular garden with, with rows of something growing in it. So that's what I was referring to. But there's no picture in the report to, to show that. Staff, can you so answer that? Have or we'll go to Mr. Bowl to talk about this. Uh, through your worship, I would, I would defer to the applicants for the details of the existing uh, plan. Okay, Mr. Bowl. Uh, Yes, the um, the soil back there, I I don't think it's been taken care of in years um, based on the condition of the home right now, or the duplex that's there right now. So um, we will, you know, repurpose the topsoil if we can use it, but um, I never, actually haven't even looked carefully into it. I haven't got a full report done on it, so that's as far as I know. All right, and uh, just a comment, and it's not, not a question to, to staff then. So I, I did support this in the, in the previous reading. Uh, one of the reasons for that is there's um, tr uh, three trees that will be saved. And what, what's great about them is um, the trees won't last forever, but what will be protected is the soil underneath them for future gro uh, growth of trees that actually have a place to put roots as opposed to into compact uh, sand and stuff. So I, I, I support uh, the project going ahead um, for the fact that there was the effort made to, to, pr to protect a maple, a cherry, and a hazelnut tree. Um, but I, I would hope that the applicant and maybe the staff at the development permit um, phase can, can look into trying to repurpose some of that soil on site. Because I, if I'm aware correctly, um, properties of this size, are, we, we don't um, um, have uh, um, any process to use soils from small residential lots and uh, because of potential contamination or, or having it be hard for us to get from all these different sites, uh, small amounts of soil. So I think it's best um, to have it utilized on, on the site if, if staff can work with uh, Mr. Bull. Uh, Wayne, go ahead. Uh, through the Chair to Council, we'll, we're happy to work with the applicant to, to reclaim and reutilize, repurpose whatever soil uh, is possible on the site. I, I must point out, though, for a point of clarification, there is no development permit associated with this. This is single family development. Uh, so. Uh, a building permit is all that would be required uh, if should this rezoning be approved. Uh, having said that, Mr. Bull is a regular uh, customer within the City of Richmond and I'm sure he will work with us to repurpose the soil as needed. Okay. Great, thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Bull. Yep. All right, we'll call the question then on second and third reading. All those in favor? Any opposed? Aye. That's carried. Uh, Number four, temporary use permit, Mr. Clerk. Item number four is temporary use permit TU20-918062. Location is 2520, 2540, 2560, 2580, 2600, 2640 Smith Street and 9031 Bridgeport Road. The applicant is BC Housing Management Commission. The purpose of the uh, permit is to issue a temporary use permit to allow uh, congregate housing use, limited to the development of a three-story supportive housing building with 40 studio units and vehicle access from Smith Street as a site-specific permitted use for three years from the date of issuance. All right, uh, so the applicant is BC Housing Management and I see that Vanessa Wong is here from BC Housing. Did you wish to make a presentation or just await questions? That's what it says on our list. You're just awaiting questions. That's right. We're, that's right. We're just here available to answer any questions that come up. All right. Any written submissions? We have none, Your Worship. All right. Move uh, the recommendation. Moved. Second. And seconded. Anyone? Let's see. Councillor Day. Thank you very much, Chair Brody. Um, well, <laughs> we're sure in a different place now than we were the last time we had a modular housing um, application. I'm, I think that the success of the last one has really led the way for this one going so smoothly. So I only
only really have one concern, and that is the proximity to the Canada line, to this development. It's so close, it's ridiculous. And I am worried that that will attract criminal activity. So I'd like to know from the um, speaker what security measures will be in place to ensure that uh, not only the people in the modular housing are safe, but the neighborhood as well. Hi there, I can respond to that. Oh, oh. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I can respond to that. Um, we have, we will install uh, fencing around the site. Um, there's a combination of chain link fencing and sear fencing that will surround the perimeter of the site. There will also be lighting uh, installed um, on the building that will highlight areas of entry. And we will also have cameras uh, monitoring all the exits and entry points uh, to the building. Uh, the site plan has also been reviewed by the RCMP, and their comments have been um, included within our drawings. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? It's carried. Uh, brings us to number five, uh, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Number five is Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500, Amendment Bylaw 10237. Floor area exclusions for high performance single family and duplex housing. Uh, the location of this is citywide. Applicant is the City of Richmond. The purpose is uh, for the City of Richmond to propose incentives to encourage new single family and duplex houses to be constructed to the certified passive house standard and to the top levels of the BC Energy Step Code. High performance houses help Richmond achieve citywide energy efficiency and greenhouse gas reduction targets while providing enhanced thermal comfort and healthy indoor air quality for occupants. First reading of this application was February 22nd, 2021. All right. Uh, I see uh, Mr. Cooper is with us. Uh, is, did you wish to make any remarks on this? We've been through it a couple times, I think. Uh, we're happy to answer questions, Your Worship. All Move right. second, third. No, 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 no. Uh, we're a little ahead of ourselves. Any written submissions? We have no written submissions, Mr. Mayor. All right, so now you can move second and move third. Move second, third. Moved and seconded. Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. I'm going to be supporting this because I think that we want to build high energy efficient houses. My only concern was that uh, they're going to get a density bonus of 10%. And so I was happy to read on page PH325 that staff has made it clear that if the conditions are not met for the construction, then the construction stops and removal of the extra 10% uh, will be will be initiated. So I, I feel like this is not a risky situation where we're going to allow for these to be built and um, with any luck at all, all the incentives will be there and all of the um, um, repercussions if it isn't done the way it is promised to be done. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. Councillor Steves. Uh, you're muted, Harold. I'll be supporting it, but I do have a question. Uh, I am concerned about adding extra density on, on, the, on the lots where these houses are going to be built. My concern is that we're encouraging bigger houses when we should be uh, encouraging smaller ones. And I guess my, staff, uh, my question to staff is, for a long time, we've said, when you get a change in the 702 process to get smaller houses, because I can see a density bonus on a small house. But I sure don't want to see any bigger houses to get a passive house because they're, these, they're mansions now. And uh, I think uh, basically we should be building, uh, in terms of energy and affordability and everything else, the uh, houses we build today should be half the size of what we're building. So where are we at getting a, a, some sensible uh, lot sizes? Uh, to your worship, I, I see Mr. Ursik has uh, turned on his video. I think he, he wishes to. Uh, I'll refer that question to Mr. Ursik. Oh. Oh. Um, through the chair, uh, the council stays. Uh, yes, we're working on some housing referrals currently that will be coming in May. And then 
a little later this year, we're proposing to bring to council a um, a bigger housing research uh, project that would form part of the first phase of an official community plan review and consultation with the community on revisions to the 702 policies, uh, looking at smaller lots and smaller houses uh, would be a major component of that body of work. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll call the question then on second and third. All those in favor? Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's carried then on adoption. Move adoption. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? Aye. That is carried. And adoption. Move adoption, the amendment bylaw. Okay, that's moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. And Move adjournment. We are now.